Okay, everyone. So, welcome to episode 22 of Coffee with Jonah Brent. Whoop, whoop. So, 22, times. 22 people. 22 people are probably the only ones that have seen our show. Yeah. <laughs> so, we are lucky to be here. I'm honored to have Dr. Kenny Wilston and his beautiful, unwilling to be here wife. Thank <laughs> you for being here, anyways. Anna Wilston. So, Yay. thanks for being here. <laughs> Wait, it like put them side by side. Side by side with us? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. This is we're not professional like this. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what people All are right, saying. Well, it's just gonna cut back and forth to whoever's talking. So right. we'll figure that out. Next time. Sure. Anyway, <laughs> so um so just a brief background. I know we did it a couple episodes ago um talking about our experience and how we met. Um should I call you Kenny? Should I call you Dr. Yeah, you call me Kenny. Cool. I'm going to call you Kenny. We're going to go informal here. <laughs> we're, you know, we're on lockdown. We're having coffee. We're having coffee. Right. So, um, so I, I met Kenny, you know, met him on Facebook. Um, and we just had a bunch of random mutual friends though. It's not all from one area. It's just random. And he would post like some of the most amazing videos of, um, like dental types of reconstruction, right? Like, like, and I'm probably not doing justice to what you do, but taking people who their mouth is a mess and looks like magic to me the way you can transform it. And just the videos are really inspiring and you can see how people really uh, change transform. their, they transform their whole demeanor changes. And we thought that was just so cool. And I reached out to him and just said, Hey, you know, you're doing a really good thing. Keep it up. And also the videos he posts of him and his wife and his family are hysterical. <laughs> so if you're not lucky enough to be one of his friends on Facebook, you are missing out. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, let, let's let's bring you guys on and um, just first of all, welcome. Thanks for thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having us. Um, we have never done a of a pod, you know, a video podcast before. It's usually it's usually off color, like racy, like almost porn lately. That we <laughs> this is the first like with clothes on. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, there is a desk here. I'm yeah. dressed from the waist up. So. What you see? <laughs> With our drinking our quarantinis. <laughs> he's not so bad. Um, I, you know, I, I would say that he surprised his wife by telling her what an hour ago that he, she was going to be on the podcast. <laughs> A direct quote from the video was, I want to be done with our marriage. That was a direct quote. <laughs> he does kind of trap me like that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I get it. Well, <laughs> I did, just to be fair to us, I did give the option of saying tonight or some other week. <laughs> just so we're clear. It's true. But I thought nothing like the present. <laughs> That's right. Let's get it out of the way for you. Right? We may not last another week, so I thought you know we better get in the video now. So, oh how are you guys holding up with the quarantine? Oh, we're good. We just—I mean, we're used to being around each other a lot, so it's—it just gives me more opportunity for entertainment. So, Ooh, you better not take his phone. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotta, it's gotta so far, that's not. So far, my phone is not quarantined, so we're just we'll we'll be fine. Uh. times. <laughs> Yeah, I'm recording this. There we go. Look at that. I can record this now. Oh, look at that. So, um, all right. So, Kenny, can you give us like kind of your background, like where are you from originally, and your story? Yeah, I'm from Arizona, Mesa, Arizona. Um, I there's seven kids in our family. I'm an identical twin. So, um, which one? I met my wife after I got back from Guatemala. I was there for two years on a mission. And um, we got married just after a few months. She was actually living in Utah and I was living in Arizona. We just dated over the phone where I was strapped to the wall, like with that wow. big long twirly cord. Uh -huh. not, the, not the other way. Uh, <laughs> so we, we, talked, we talked every night for a while and we ended up, I flew out there to see her. It was a funny story actually in that because a friend of mine, he knew somebody in Utah too. So he's like, oh, we'll go together. Like, I'll see this one girl I know, and then you can, you know, see Anna. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we, back back in the year 2000, which is when this was, like, people could meet you right after, right as you're getting off, you know, the gate. 
the tarmac or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Bin Laden. Uh, so um, I remember, though, coming out, and I remember seeing this big gorilla lady, like, because I had never met my wife, like, in, like, I, I had met her, 50, like, five or six years before that and got her number because she lived in a small, oaky town, mm -hmm. which explains a lot more than you think. But <laughs> anyway, yeah. So I meet, so I'm, but I'm coming off of the, off, out of the plane and I see this girl and I'm like, and she's waving, she's like super, super excited to, you know, to wave. And I'm like, oh, no. and my, I remember just feeling all the blood rush out of my body. And then, and then out of nowhere, I hear my friend Mark go, Bethany. And he like shoves me to the side and he races out to the, to the, see this girl. And I'm like, <gasps> and I look over and I see my wife like you know like 50 yards on the other end of the airport just laughing her head off next to this this big huge beam and I was just like that was the freakiest thing and I just grew up <laughs> and so um so anyway so she she got a kick out of that we went out and we hung out for a few days and then and then after that um she came out and saw me like two weeks later to, in Arizona and literally on that trip like we went and looked at rain so that was almost wow. funny. damn. Look at that. Did you did you chat with her on AIM at all? <laughs> AIM. Yeah. No. You didn't check on AOL or anything AOL. like that? Come on. AOL. Gosh. I don't even know if that was even around when. Oh, was this okay. Oh, yes, it was. Come on, that's so okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't know about it. I was too poor. Her family. I don't even think I had a computer. They had eleven. She has eleven kids in her family. Wow. And yeah. she was homeschooled, and they had booklets that they read from. <laughs> so. Wow. And I'm just complaining about our one that drives us crazy. <laughs> so, all right. So, you guys met. Like, how did you first meet? Though you said five years before. Was that through church? So I was. Um, I was part of this like. So my friend on the bus, literally, like, when I was about 15, he's, he says to me, hey, you want to come to this, like, like this thing? And I'm like, what do you mean this thing, this church thing? And I'm like, what, what church thing? And he's like, well, I do the lights, but there's, like, this bunch of girls and guys, and they do, like, these skits, and they sing, and we have, like, 100 people there at these different church buildings. And he's like, you know, do you do any of that? I'm like, no. Sorry, I'm the guy in the back, like, making fun of them. Yes. <laughs> so he's like well you know I don't do it either but I mean I get to go on all the trips with them wherever they go and we just like we're part of the, I have the tech a tech crew shirt and I'm like he's like you can just wear one of my shirts and you can come and I'm like okay so I like so I went and they were heading out of town that day for like three days and um sure enough he brought me along and the lady's like sweet you know extra help and so I was like so I literally just helped get out all the wires and hook everything up. And I was the guy on the, on the st side of the stage, like with all the different lights shining on different things. And I was having a, I was having a time, like with the lights, I was really, I was the best. So, but she didn't show up. Her family didn't show up there on that Saturday night to the, to the whole thing that they were doing with all the skits and stuff. But the next day was church and her whole family lined the front row, all 11 of them. I mean, they literally from one end all the way to the other. And her dad was the bishop up in front and so but right in the middle of the first meeting they like her and her sister like stood up and they walked out and every guy in our group just their, their heads just followed them all the way out of the building oh. and so then they came back and and it was funny though because after the meeting ended they her and her sister like came up and started talking to me and all the guys were like super mad they're just like what you know because they were the guys that were you know they were the talent you know and i was just the help Right. You know, so, but they invited me, but they didn't know that, you know? Yeah. And so, but they invited me like, Hey, do you want to ditch the rest of church? And, you know, you can come over to our house and like, we can have lunch or hang out. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, so we did, but we, after about an hour or something, like we came back, um, just cause they didn't want to get in trouble because our church, it was three hours long. So you can be gone forever and still be yeah. fine. But when we got back, I went on to, I went, and I couldn't find anyone from our group. And sure enough, like I went to the stage behind the curtains and all the suitcases were gone, except for mine was stuck right in the middle. And I'm like, they left? Like. And they were like two hours out of town. Oh no. Yeah. So I, these girls, her and her sister just got super excited. They're just like road trip, you know, like we're yeah. going to the, we're going to the valley. 
And so we jumped in the car and her sister, because we were both young, we were like 15, and her sister just raced us down the highway, which is funny because that little car was a little Honda CRX, mm -hmm. which was funny because like six years later, we're having kids and like, there's no back seat. So fast forward six years and we have, we got pregnant on the honeymoon and had like, and then had Paige right after that. So we had three kids before I was 23. And we literally were going to church in that same CRX. Wow. Like oh piling all these kids. We just open up the hatchback on the back and like shove our like toddlers in the back. It's, I'm sorry. Anyways. But I remember like, but I remember we're racing down the highway and I'm stuck in between these two front seats, like, you know, in a, like an adult child, just like this. And they're just like all talking, talking, talking the whole time. And I'm just like, are we going to die? <laughs> and, um, and it was through the mountains because she lived, like I said. So anyways, um, but we didn't catch the bus. And so we ended up turning around and they had to let their moms know that, hey, we're going to make an official trip all the way to the valley. And so they had to go get changed and everything and ask permission. And while we were right when we were about ready to leave, like my twin brother, which who happened to join this trip because I was he was jealous that I was going and he wasn't. So he he caught a he he got a last minute like um thing. So he shows up at the door and he's like, You're dead, dude. Oh. And I look down and I see this lady down in one of the cars of one of the members of the church, like she had she was riding shotgun and she was like, <laughs> and I'm like, <sighs> and so anyway, so I got kicked out of the group. But, oh. And so did my twin brother, which he still hasn't forgiven me for. But um, but I just I was in the group just long enough to meet my wife and get her phone number. That's all you needed. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I invited that lady to the to the wedding and she showed up and I'm just like, no way. She told me I was more trouble than I was worth and I'm just like, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> On a, how like of all the the eleven kids, are you in the middle? Like I'm fourth oldest. Fourth oldest, okay, and then you're Kenny of seven. Where are you? I'm second from the bottom. Oh, okay. Wow. So parents are going all of a sudden towards. They're almost done. Then twins. Yep. Great. Yeah. And then my little sister. My little sister had twins too. Oh, so it runs in the family <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it's funny because she had four kids first. She's a fitness model, like she's and but like she had four kids first, and then she got pregnant on accident with twins. With twins. Yeah. <laughs> so she went from four kids to six kids and she still hasn't like she still hasn't forgiven her husband for it he was just like, yeah. he's like they will be fine <laughs> is she still a fitness model no no so that's what she became after all that after oh, six wow. kids damn that's yeah. awesome yeah. why are you looking at me <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> You hear that story, sweetie? <laughs> you hear that, babe? You can do it. You only had one. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> See, you only have three. Like, you only like, have three. Like, what's your excuse, baby? Like, yeah. She had twins. Twins. She had twins plus four more. Plus four others. Jeez. So, wow. you, so you, got, you guys have three, though? Yeah. Okay. And how I met you? Anna, actually. She had a two-year-old already. When I finally got back with her, or met her when back from... She already had a little two-year-old, and um, she didn't tell me, though. So, like, I literally meet her up in Utah, and I'm like. <laughs> What's that? So, anyways, yeah, so it was, it was, she had lots of, she has lots of, she's all full of surprises. You never know what you're getting. <laughs> so, how old are the kids? Well, Allie was two then, now she's 22. Okay. And then Parker, he is 18. He's, a, he's in Boise going to school. He's pre-dental out there and then on um, page is 18 or 17 she's a senior oh. we were just in Boise a couple years ago that's, that's really pretty up there we want to go back up there again yeah can't right now i know um, i know we're wondering we're supposed to go out and get him and we're like are they gonna let us back in texas oh i know right yeah yeah i mean it's pretty up there <laughs> just yeah. up there. we were like i was saying why don't we just go rent a trailer and just go Park outside Yellowstone. I'm like, if we're going to be quarantined, let's go find something really pretty. Yeah, go do something fun. Right. Right. So, all right, Kenny, how did you get into dentistry? Like, what was the whole thing? Was that, I love dentistry, or is this, I want to make my parents happy? Like, what got you into that? Because there's a funny story with her on that one. No, my dad was, like, working, like, 80-hour weeks, and he was, like, a, like, I don't know. I just saw that he was never there very often, like, when I was in school and stuff for all of my extracurricular sports and stuff. And so... I wanted to like do something that you got paid well, but you still got to be home when it counted. 
And so I started to, I went into the career center and looked through their whole book and I kept, they kept coming back to dentistry and I'm like, you know, and I think the thing that sold me is that they said that you could like, at the time, like I kept getting made fun of for the music I listened to as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And so it was like nineties country. And back in those days, it was like, it was like frowned upon by so many people. Right. And, um, but anyways, like, I'm just like, I get to listen to my own music. At work. Like the stupidest <laughs> reason in the world to like choose a, to choose a field, but there's but, um, down and I can listen to, I can I'm just like, I can honky tonk it. I can, I can play Brooks and Dunn all day. Oh. <laughs> so, but anyways, no, ever since then, I was, since I was 15, even when I met her, when, when we were older, um, and, and she was in Utah, um, I asked her what she did and she's like, I'm a dental assistant. And she's like, wow. Uh, wow. So she happened to be a dental assistant already. And then I was already, I was planning on being a dentist. I hadn't started a single, when I met her when we were 21, I hadn't even started college yet because I was gone for two years in Guatemala. So I, I didn't start college until I was 23 and didn't graduate. I didn't graduate till I was, um, till I was, um, I didn't graduate. It took me nine years to get through all the schooling. So I was 31, but when I, I was 31 when I became a dentist. Wow. And I'll, be, I'll be 41 in two weeks. Okay. Hey, look at that. Happy early birthday. So wait, Ani, you work with him? Yes. So maybe I swear I saw you when we were in, but I mean, you were- Yeah, she was there that day. And she did, I'm like, you missed the coolest couple. And I'm like, you just missed them. I saw her peeking around the corner, like this staring at me. And I was like, who's that lady? Because yeah. she eyeballs all of my male patients. Yeah. <laughs> She says she calls it her. She calls it her cancer list. <laughs> it was weird because I was like laying down in the chair, and I was like, "Why is she like looking at me from that angle?" <laughs> it's very spooky. A lot of people, a lot of people catch her. She's very sneaky. Very sneaky. All right. Well, that's cool that you guys get to work together too. Yeah. That's so, neat. how did you get into into it, Anna? In the dental field. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know, I always kind of had a fascination with it. I had a friend that um, her dad was a dentist and we'd always go clean the office when we were young yeah. um, for years. And I don't know, I just always kind of thought it was interesting. And so then when I was out on my own, I heard about the dental assisting program. And so I did it and then I always wanted to be an oral surgeon. And then we decided to put him through school instead of me. So. It always tells my patients that then we put the wrong person through dental school. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Joan had big dreams. She was going to be huge dreams. A she, plastic surgeon. She was going to be a plastic surgeon. This yeah. is what <laughs> happens when you go to school to impress other people. That's right. So, yeah, you know, now you're a photographer. Yeah. So she, got, she got that oh. sweet pre med degree. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> wow. Yeah, pre med. What? What? Then I went. To That's school. cool. Oh, mom. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How old is your child? I don't know. He's, What's his name? He's four. He's, he's four. Four he's four. five in August. So. Okay. What's yeah. his name? What's his name? Jack. Jack. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> we have one. <laughs> yeah. yeah we have so one. you did pre. You did pre med. Yeah. We're pre med. Wow. Oh, yeah, you like, didn't go to med school. Just, I didn't go to med school, but I did. I did do that in hopes to be a plastic surgeon but clearly didn't go that route because I was tired of school by yeah. the end of that. I was just I was tired of it. It wasn't she was gonna give me a reduction. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That was the motivation. That's what got me into it. <laughs> She's like, that's why I stopped wanting to be <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. In fact, it's funny because my as soon as I became a dentist was when she retired from dental assisting. So she literally had as well, like right away. Yeah, but when I tell stories, like just let me tell them. Oh, okay. I'll go. I'll, I'll go. Are you yeah. seriously gonna be that person that when I tell a story, you're gonna be like like cutting it? Into I just thought you might have forgot. <laughs> I can't mute her half of the mic. I can't. Yeah, like, like a lot of details shrunken down to a small okay. like, conversation. I got you. I got you. Um, so she stops, she, stops, she stops dental assisting and she says it's because like she didn't want to be that wife in the office like you know making everybody uncomfortable and like telling them what to do because she was in a lot of offices where the wives were around and they just were like a plague to the mm -hmm. rest of the office and she's like I won't be that and I'm just like all right, but I thought it was really cool when we were dating and you said you're pre, you know, you're a dental assistant and I'm a dentist and we like work together. Like, and then 
how we're kind of, I just, it just felt like a lot of inner feelings, like, and like her feelings about me just kind of like came out when she decided to quit at that exact time. <laughs> it's probably true. And now she starts, she got back into the field because of all of like, like whenever I have a pretty patient, she's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and so she's like, I think I'm going to come to work for, with you from now on. And I'm like, oh, okay. Sure. And so that's then that's the staring. That's, it. <laughs> that's it. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> she wasn't looking at you. She was actually eyeballing your wife. It's <laughs> 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 Oh, goodness. I love it. This is the best conversation we've had. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best. Yeah. We're only 22 episodes in. I know, I know. <laughs> this is a good conversation. This is a good conversation. Okay, so um, I don't know how much you want to get into it, but what? why do you feel like you guys are different than most dentists? Like, what's the problem with dentistry out there today? Uh-huh. Be nice. All right. Yeah, be nice. It's, it's okay. No one right. watching this is a dentist. So. I know, right? <laughs> um, no, honestly, like, like it, real deal. Yeah, I mean, the biggest deal is right now is that most dentists are coming out of school thinking that implants are like the first thing you think about. <laughs> that is definitely the first thing you think about. Oh, and then we all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think literally this should be a lot deeper of a friendship, honestly. Yeah. Okay. I agree. So, anyways. Um, they basically, a lot of dentists right now are just pulling everything that looks that looks bad superficially, and they're just like, and they're throwing out prices to get to do the, that kind of a fix, like as fast as they can. And so it's basically circumventing all the other options that truly are like pretty, you know, feasible for most people, where the options they are giving people are not feasible at all. So that people are leaving thinking that they just can't get their mouth fixed for anything unless they get dentures and just pull everything. Right. And so the, I'm kind of in the business of saving teeth um, and a lot of dentists right now are just kind of like, oh wow, I think, because they, they basically say, you're obviously not brushing, you're obviously not doing a good job, why save them if, if the work I do in your mouth is just gonna go to crap? And so it's like, why save them? So let's just pull them all into a denture. But the problem is they're saying this to people who are like 29 years old. And so my attitude is like, if I can give them a reason to like their smile or to like their teeth again, yeah. then now they'll, they'll actually change their ways and brush the rest of them. Right. But there's a lot of teeth out there that once it gets past a certain point of severity, like their cavities on their front, like get bad enough, they can't actually brush them without being in extreme pain because they're kind of like brushing the nerve mm-hmm. in a way or a very sensitive part of the tooth. And so they stop brushing, not because they choose to be slothful or... You know, it's genuinely because it hurts too bad to brush them properly. Well, it's going to be a time management thing because they only have like two of them. So it shouldn't take that long. No, it's not that hard to do. It's not that I mean, flossing should be no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Like a rope with a knot in it could work too. Yeah. yeah. A lot of social distancing we're seeing in the dental world now. Yeah. <laughs> So, but that's really what everyone's doing wrong right now is this, and they're just, the prices are just out of control. They, they're, they're, they're super slow at what they do. So they charge as much as they can, but most people don't even go to the dentist anymore. So these dentists, I just met one today, um, for, for an hour at his office. And, um, he says that he's a cosmetic dentist. He's been doing it for 40 years. And he basically like, he's heard my numbers that I'm doing. And he said, that's five times what I do. And I'm a, co- and I'm like one of the most well-known cosmetic dentists in Richardson. Jeez. And, and the only reason, and he just, he sat there with his mind and his head. He's like, he sat, I've never seen somebody in such a stupor. He just couldn't believe what I'm, he's like, how, how can you do that ethically? And I'm like, ethically. And he's like, I don't mean to say you're unethical by doing it, but he's like, I genuinely can't understand how you're doing that much dentistry. And I'm just like, because there's that much dentistry that needs to be done. Right. You just don't have any patients coming through that need it because all the ones that, have, all the, this demographic that I service have stopped believing that dentists will treat them right. Right. And they won't screw them. And so I, I learned who they are and how to tap into them. And they all come in and I get all their work done. He hasn't, doesn't have that 
that conduit whatsoever. And so he basically services people that don't need hardly any work done. Because all the people that need it, just they, they only have to go once to realize that they're going to get screwed. And so they just right. stop going. A lot of people are disenfranchised for sure. Like, yeah. I mean, we were rude to them and we don't really have any problems, but still, we just go in and like. Well, maybe that's like, my point. Yeah. yeah. Even if you don't have any problems, they'll find something wrong. Instead of yeah. getting a pat on the back saying, great job, your teeth look amazing, like their mindset is get something out of them. Like, right. what can we find? There's got to be something. And so you don't really walk in and get a pat on the back anymore for having great teeth. You're like in your 20s or 30s and you're, you take really good care and they see that you take care of yourself. And you're in the, the weirdest thing is that like they know that you're going to be surprised when they tell you what you need done and yet they still have the balls to say it to you. Mm -hmm. is what, and it's like they will go through right through the, the center of somebody and be like, and then they're going to spend 30 minutes talking about a, a certain kind of thing they want to sell you. And I'm like, they'll find, they'll push their little probe into your gum line and make it bleed just to tell you that you have like. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I knew it. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, you have deep pockets, you have fours, and that means you have periodontal <laughs> disease. I was like, oh, that hurts. They're like, oh, that's a deep one. Son of a bitch. It's yeah. not. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh. Yeah, it's deep now. Thank you. You just you just tore all those fibers right to hell. Right. So then now then now you have now you need a deep cleaning. And do you want to know why they all said that? It's because you told them you hadn't been in a while. Ah, uh, you're right. Yep. Yeah. So if you ever give them the information, if you tell them you you went six months ago and you just moved here and you take care of it and your teeth look great, but if you ever say, oh, and they say how long they they ask you a very critical question, how long has it been since you've been? And yeah. You say, oh wow, it's been like three years. That right there just set yourself up for them finding a way to say that you need a deep cleaning. Has it always been that way in the industry or is it getting worse? It's been like that for about the last five years at least. But I mean, I would say easily almost 10 years now, but it's gotten really bad because it's actually getting more and more scarce, the amount of patients coming in. So they've buckled down even more on every single person that's well-to-do with the mouth. They just can't get any of the other people to even show up. Yeah, it feels Those like are people are like a car place and they you know they, you feel like you're getting screwed from the beginning like oh we found all yeah, when there's not a single person that's walked through the door in days and suddenly somebody wants to buy a car or just wants to browse and look right. like they're not going to tell you that they have cheap cars in the back that they should they should, that, that would probably work best for them right. like they're going to show you the cause an unreasonably priced like, car that they need to get rid of that nobody else will buy and they'll tell they'll talk it up like crazy i mean they're just desperate at that point and they're just it, it stops becoming about honesty and, and way more about just, I don't know, give me what, what they can get out of each person, but I don't know. And, and that's so probably not true for all, but too many. What changed though in the past, say, 10 years? Like, why did all of a sudden the industry change? Like, people that people weren't coming. So, why was that? Just the new way um, to school? Or? A lot of it is competition. People in flux to the same area. When there's a good place, quality place to, to raise a family or to live, you're going to get competition. And when you get too much competition or too much saturation in one area, these patients, these doctors who are just used to people coming in all the time are now suddenly getting less patients. And so when you get less, you start to, you have to respond to that accordingly. And instead of just being more honest with people and saying, wow, you have a great mouth. Suddenly it's just like, you know what, have you ever tried whitening? Or right. you know what, have you ever tried like Invisalign, you know, and suddenly there's promotions and gimmicks to try to get people to come in. I mean, the guy that called me, the guy that wanted to, to visit with me, he only is bringing, wanted to bring me on one day a week in his office because um, he wanted the $700 of rent for what, because his basically his five day week, he's only busy enough right now for three days, but he's been stretching it to five days. So he's like really like spaced out in his day. And so what he thought is like, if I can put everybody on three days, I can bring in another doctor and just charge him rent for a day. Mm -hmm. So he's willing to bring in a whole other doctor with a whole other mindset just for 700 bucks. Wow. And I'm like, and that's how much he's hurting. Most doctors would never share their, their home, which for a lot of us, that's our home. Like that's what we built. He, he's built that office and that reputation for a long time. And to kind of bring in a stranger for right. just 700 bucks. And, he, and I asked him why, I said, why would you do this? And he's like, the lease, man, the lease of this building, you know, is, is really eating me up. And I'm like, you've worked for 40 years as a dentist and you're having a hard time making your rent here. Right. right. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, wow. born and raised, born and raised in Richardson, still practices there on his 40th year. Seems like a great dentist, honestly. And he's getting, and he's got almost not enough patients to fill up his week. 
is it marketing is a big problem like you know maybe they're good at what they do but they're not good at reaching out and I mean, but yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, the ones that are 65 years old right now, that's the worst, that's the thing they're probably the worst at because they never had to do that before. Right. So it's it's always been terms. successful. Yeah. Just, yeah. All they had to do is turn on the, their sign, turn on, put on, the, put their sign outside and they were, had a great patient flow. But um, then all of a sudden more people started to open up around them. I mean, I went, I drove down his street and I saw four other dentists within a block. Right. And so they, you know, he hasn't, I don't feel like he's done anything wrong with his patients. Um, I think he's done everything actually right by the standard of dentistry in all, in my honest opinion, but it goes to show that like, it takes now a lot more and it doesn't take just being a good dentist to get patients right now. It takes, um, I mean, and the, the worst thing is, is that marketing, like, like mint dental, dent, mint dentistry or things like that, where they have massive like billboards everywhere. Yeah. Like right now, marketing is king, but the only people that are doing what I do is me, which is I, I put myself right in front of people. They get to see my work. I mean, I'm not a billboard. I'm not, you can actually go through my page and see the last 30 or 40 patients that I've seen. I post so much of it that you kind of don't just get one snapshot yeah. of my quality. You can see it week out, day after day, week after week, so that people can get a really good handle on if I'm legit or not. But most people, that's what they're scared of the most is they don't know how to, where do they spend if they have a fifth, they need a lot of work. How do you, trust that this person's going to be able to do a good job right i mean that's a lot of money to just put faith in a stranger to say because they've seen bad dentistry before we all hear about it mm -hmm. so if somebody needs an entire makeover or just has a needs a bridge or implant and stuff like that i mean it's not easy to just they know that google is can be rigged like that somebody has 400 five-star reviews that all you got to do is like get every patient that you know like had a, had a good experience be like hey we're not going to let you leave here there's a there's an ipad right here just leave a five-star review before you leave and we'll give you 20 percent off your bill today like that so they even then they can't really find a good dentist based off of google reviews either because those can be you know those can be pretty skewed by that kind of stuff so that's the only reason why i do it the way i do it is because i'm like don't don't believe me when i say just watch what i can do yes I so how is it that you're marketing? Because I mean, you've got a ton of people that are coming in from across the country that will come in to see you. And they'll drive. Yeah. So, how, I mean, are you just doing it through Facebook? Is that your main? Yeah, but I went. I've gone viral a whole bunch of times across the United States and the and and the world. Um, I would just do different cases, and then it would be picked up by national the national media. Gotcha. And when that started happening, then I mean, I got in one day like a thousand friend requests and messages on my messenger that I still haven't got to. I can, and it's just a bunch of people, you know, ex, you know, explaining that they had this happen to them and they would really, you know, they would love some, a new smile as well. But some of those cases that went viral were like me doing something for free mm -hmm. or for a really reduced price and stuff. Right. And so the patients were really moved by that and it just, the good deed kind of went viral. Right. And so it just call it kind of caught the attention of all the people out there that, you know, are broke and need need their lives changed with a new smile but i couldn't help everybody but um every once in a while there'll be somebody that's been following me like religiously and they kind of have have kind of caught the notion that i'm not the dentist to go to for if you want free work i mean that has to be born out of me sure. you know you don't get to give me a sob story and then have me say oh wow you really deserve this i'm gonna i'm gonna give this to you for free that's not right. how i do it if right. you start off with a sob story i won't even read it Right. Because it's like, that's not fair to me. I'm not, I'm not here to, to do it. If your sob story is good enough. Right. You, know, so, well, you um, posted some stuff too, of people being really entitled and the in, downright, you know, mean when, oh, yeah. you know, and they, they, they expect stuff for free. And yeah. When they, well, they never ask for it for free, but well, what they'll, they'll use a keyword and they say, can you help me? Yeah. And I'm just like, and then they, then the funny thing is when I kind of like been like, well, what do you mean by help? And they're like, oh, I would never want this for free. And I'm just like, can just one person say what they're going to do before they ask me what I'm willing to do? Yeah. Like, to say first, like, this is how much I have. Like, can you make that fit? Yeah. Like, in fact, I, 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 one time I said in one, the one way I said, you know what, show me what's in your hand first, and then I'll show you what's in mine. You know, but don't just sit there and say like, what can you give me? Like, and I'm like. I mean, don't ask me always what's in my hand, but, <laughs> but especially during quarantine. Especially during quarantine, you never know. <laughs> hey, just laughing. You made her laugh from the other end of the room. Um, 
So anyways, but yeah, no, I don't like, and then I don't like enabling people that are asking for free for anything for help. You know, I'm just like, no, why? I was saying like, what are you going to do to help yourself? Right. So, so that I can then help you, you know, first, I'll help you before, after you help yourself. Yeah. And so they're just like, oh, okay. And then some people come back after a few years of, of working on it, you know, but a lot of people just get mad and they'll just like find something hateful to say. And I'm like, Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too much. I yeah, I mean, there's a there's actually a comment that one person made. I never even knew what it meant, and they said, um, oh, "What does it mean about no good deed goes unpunished?" And I that that was when I learned what it meant. It means like you know you, you do when you do a good deed. Like for example, if you're a person who gives a lot and gives a lot and gives a lot, then there's one person you couldn't give enough to. And then they punish you for it and you end up becoming like super, you know, the bad guy. And it's just like, you know, at some point people that are really extremely good in the world, like it becomes, you know, at some point it becomes some sort of bad day for them. Right. Somebody will make them pay for it if they didn't help everyone. First. Well, and they have to realize too, this is your business. It's not just, you know. I you mean, people don't get it. It's like, I do, I do free stuff because I need advertising. Like I trade and so I don't need billboards outside. I don't need all that. So I, I find these circumstances that it'll help both of us. I don't just pick a random person to help. Like yeah. I, wait for the, I wait for that moment to tell me, hmm, this is a good business decision to help this person. I'm not just some nice good Samaritan. Like I'm also understanding that this is going to be not just good for them. It's going to be good for me too. Let's not be like that you know, naive about it. Like I know what I'm doing with marketing. Yeah. It's not, I like helping people, but I, it, it also helps teach people what I'm capable of on the dental side of things. So watch those cases. I look at, so I'm like, well, you have those three front teeth missing. This is going to showcase something that I can do that most people can't. So I get to help you and I get to help showcase something that I can do as well. So it wasn't so random. Like there's a lot of you know, method to who I choose and how I choose to help them. So yeah. what if you did my teeth like Matt Dillon in there's something about Mary where they're just white or in uh, Wolf of Wall Street where they're just phosphorescent white. Would that be a good billboard for you? <laughs> I mean, I might, the title might change. I'd be like, it, I would say mint dental is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be awesome. Uh, they make sexy teeth. They do make sexy teeth. Go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, though, because, like, how people try to find dentists, I don't know, because, I mean, I'm just, you know, the common person. Before, like, I, I saw you, and you were, what really kind of attracted me to you, um, <laughs> cute, was, I mean, you were talking about how, you know, dentists overcharge and stuff like that, and a lot of the stuff had been stories that I had heard and had experienced. But before I saw you, I mean, it would, like you said, it'd be a Google search. You know, I was trying to find at one point. The closest. No, like, because we're a little bit crunchy in the way we eat, and we try to do everything a little bit more holistically. So I try to find, like, oh, holistic dentistry. Well, that's like, and I look at the price, I'm like, damn, that's expensive for what they're going to charge me. I'm like, no, hell, I'm just not going to go. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, yeah. and then I was like, oh, you know what, I'll try one here. And then I went to one nearby, and it had gotten bought by another dentist and then they didn't run it the same way as the one the website had advertised. Like they're like, yeah. oh, oh, it's fine. You want fluoride? No, I'm good. So deep cleaning, three thousand dollars. Deep cleaning, it was so expensive. It wasn't three thousand, wow. it was nine hundred. It might as well have been it was nine hundred bucks for my deep cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. and so then that was like, okay, well, good, I've got this done. I'm not gonna go back again. And so that's why it's so refreshing to come across you guys. Mm -hmm. Um and so, I mean, your office is in Garland, right? I can't remember. Garland? No. Yeah. Which is not close to us. It's no. like, you know, a 45 minute drive. It was an hour the morning it was raining, but you know, we go away every six months. Big deal. Although right. the other dentist tell me though, because my teeth were so bad that I have to go every three months for a deep cleaning. See, because I'm right. dangerous. Right. Yeah. These guys are the only guys that ever, you guys are the only dentist that ever told me that my teeth look good. The only ones. Everyone's like, oh. you're, you're, uh, your teeth are falling out. You know, you got gum disease. It's it's bad. You know, like, oh it's crazy. It really is that bad though. Like I am, I've been keeping track. I mean, I've been in 27 offices and I couldn't believe 
out of all that time, like what, and this is across, you know, Arizona and Texas. And the stories were always the same. Like I never, I never would run across, especially all the newer dentists, the older dentists, they're just, they're just getting screwed because they don't have near as many patients as they deserve. Right. But the younger dentists, anyone that's, you know, in the last five years out of school, which there's a lot around here. Right. And um, they're probably good dentists, but they just are being taught a mentality that just is completely flawed. They look at, here's the one mentality flaw is that anything that's not perfect, like perfect, perfect means it's like destined for failure and needs to be fixed and replaced. For example, if a crown gets put on and has a little open, what they call an open margin, and it shows in an x-ray, a little opening on one of the little, the little part where it touches the, the rest of the tooth. Just the tooth. Now, when I, they used to call, they used to say, well, that means it's going to be leaking and it will need to be replaced. It means it's going to fail soon and you'll get a cavity underneath it and you'll never know about the cavity ever because it's under the crown. Oh, and then it's going to go into the jaw and it's going to abscess. Yeah, everything. Yeah. yeah, you'll get it. You'll get an abscess and you won't even know about it until it's too late. Then you'll need an implant. And so they'll convince this person um, that they need a new crown. So now this person now hates right away the old dentist who or the other, the former dentist who put that in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now should I go to the board? She like, I, I mean, and so now this new doctor has to, now he has right to now cut it off, do a new one. And now he has their patient and he did, and he did it in the most shady way. And the funny thing is the way I knew that that was, I, I, I did it twice in my career because I thought that that was true. Like they didn't tell us in dental school that an open margin could last 30 years like that with no problems. Oh, wow. It wasn't until I got working with another dentist and I started seeing some of his work after 30 years of being on, and I saw that same little looking open margin on a few of his crowns every once in a while. And then I looked, and you can tell if there's a cavity forming there or not. And I'm like, how long ago was that done? And he's like, 1972. Oh. And I was like, and he would look in the charts and that's when it was done. I'm like, that looks amazing. Right. And it was only then though that I understood like, okay, so not all dentistry that's not perfect is means uh, you know catastrophic failure. It needs to be replaced ASAP. Like, so there's a big overreaction in the dental world for work, for extra work. So they're picking apart really good mouths, redoing work that doesn't need to be redone. And the next crown they get to charge more for because we're going to make a better one. Uh, and so these people, it's just a very negative. Now that person, they may trust technically for a temporary amount of time. They may trust, they may trust the new dentist, but they now feel like mo the other dentist is, is a bad dentist and they paid all this money for that. And now they, and so it just creates, and you do that times a thousand, for every person that's now getting that same experience at all these different dental offices and it starts to become something where it's just like they stop trusting all dentists mm -hmm. and so they they really just even the newer doctor that they're in they're just like because the funny thing is the newer doctor that put his own crown on he won't even take an x-ray of his own stuff to show him how, how much better his is <laughs> wow. wow so it's a very it's it's just there's not a lot there's not a lot of bad dentists out there they're they're just a lot less informed on what prices should be you know, what, I don't know. It's just enough to where it, it always, the, whatever they say seems to always favor their own wallets way more than the patients yeah. every single time. Yeah, I think there's a lot in a lot of industries like that, but that one is definitely a big one that people really avoid it. And they're trusting us though. That's my, my the thing, I'm like, they know that you don't know what you, they know that you guys have no clue right. what's going on. And I always tell people, I'm like, just if you don't know anything, just go off your gut. If it feels wrong, and they're just, even though they're making sense and the things that they're saying, like totally, make, if they're playing to your fears, right? like do this or else, mm -hmm. we would hate for this to be, we would hate for this to turn into, I learned from my mom is my mom said that they had a big metal filling and this one dentist told her, hey, if you don't get that filling switched out, you're going to lose that tooth and it's going to need like a root canal and all this stuff. And my mom said that that tooth did not, nothing. She said, do you know what Kenny I did? I'm like, what? She's like, I wanted to test his theory out. Yeah. <laughs> it would be good. It would be dead in a year and would need to be pulled. And so she's like, I didn't believe him. So I decided to test him out and I decided to never do something on purpose. What's the worst that's going to happen? You lose the tooth eventually. Right. She's like, I decided to do nothing to it. She's like, Kenny, nothing happened to that tooth until you fixed it 30, like 30 years later. Wow. Yep. And I'm like, so there's right there. I'm just like, we should stop telling all these patients all the time, like, you need to get this done. Right. I tell them, you know what, I don't know when this tooth's going to go bad. You can either do it preemptively and avoid the thought of it, or we can wait till it breaks and you'll still get a crown then too. Right. Let's do the crown now, or wait till some of it breaks off. Rarely does a break actually mean a completely hopeless tooth. Like, 
if it breaks, it's still going to get the same effing crown you were going to, you were trying to get talked into four right. years before that. Wait. So you can actually, in dentistry, a lot of the time, wait for something to break. I'm not trying to advocate for it, but I'm like, all these people that are doing all these, hey, the, I have, the worst thing I hear about is a crack in the tooth. Mm -hmm. There's a, see this, and they can, because den people don't realize that teeth have cleavages on them, especially molars. I know, right? I mean, there's not enough cleavage in the world, in all, in all reality, but dentists love it as well. They love to see the creases in the teeth and... <laughs> I'm talking about teeth. I'm talking about teeth. So this staining, like, happens along these cre... cre Crevasses. Crevasses. Yeah. And, um... They they call they're stained right there. So the the dentist will be like, see that that see these cracks right here, that means this needs a crown. And I'm like, I'll still show them that same thing. I'm just like, listen, this is a fault line in the tooth. It it's probably at some point going to need to be crowned. You can either do that, you know, before something happens or after. It's up to you. I don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'll just educate them. I'm not going to try to tell them their their fortune and what's going to happen to this tooth. If right. I see something that's looming that really looks bad, I'll actually show them the comparison. This needs to be done now, that can be done later, or we can do them at the same time and you can just not have to worry about dentistry for quite yeah. a while. No, they both press that. So, okay, is your office new or did you just redo it, like this one where you're at? It was there five years before I got there. It's, okay. So it's a five-year-old build-out. Okay. Um, the doctor, seen, doctor there before me, he saw like 50% adults, 50% kids, and a lot of Medicaid, and so I pretty much like dumped the original patient pool almost because they were all like most of the patients i was seeing had the kids in the chair and the parents were sitting on the side and i was just like i'm used to this being in reverse where the parents are in the chair and the kids are sitting on the side so i do see kids i'm just an adult dentist and i like to say that i see the the adult teeth in the kids so because kids have adult teeth too uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> when they turn around 10 or 11 they start getting like their adult molars and i wouldn't use that as a slogan i wouldn't go for that one i see the adult teeth in kids very complicated yeah yeah hmm. so i like seeing the i like seeing most of the adult features of children that is, um, so <laughs> is this bill cosby dentistry oh, that's, that's, that's so nice <laughs> Are you, are you planning on, I know you just got that, but do you have plans on expanding to other locations down the road? Like McKinney? <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, I, there is an office out there. I put, like, I, put a, I put an email out for it. There is an office that's for sale in McKinney. So I wanna basically build offices where it's like Smile Again McKinney, Smile Again Allen, Smile Again Richardson, but I'm not gonna do that many, but I wanna kind of like have a few extra. And are you gonna have other dentists in those places and they're gonna kind of, work the way you work or is it going to be you just like if i can find dentists that are it's a cultural kind of like education as far as teaching these people how to run an office with not such strict professionalism but a lot more but have a high etiquette for being like having a high integrity for the actual dental side of things right so um that will be something i want if i can find the right dentist to be working with me then i don't mind like releasing them, you know, in full to some of the offices. Sure. So I'm going to start off with one only, another as far as another office. And then again, if I only, I will only relinquish a dental office if I can find somebody that's a lot closer to my like doing things the way I do them. Right now, I can cl I've cleaned my dog's teeth with some dental tools before. I don't know if you would consider me. Um, I did do a couple of years of college. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I really only hire off of looks though. <laughs> so. Oh, so Joan then, because she's got pre med. Be your, yeah. That's right. I got, I've got a couple of years of pre med. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 Anna, what do you do in the office? Um. <laughs> <laughs> you test the chairs. No, just kidding. <laughs> she's my maintenance man. <laughs> <laughs> maintenance. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he does the plumbing. <laughs> no, um, I usually do like consultation, <laughs> consultations, financial, um, and then I just, wherever the girls need help. Okay, cool. In the so book. Jump on in there. We yeah. got a breeder. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, she has a lot of the experience on this on a lot of the surgical stuff. So, but okay. she doesn't really. She rarely assists though. She even though she can, but she's kind of you can tell where her interest lies. She's not even if I'm doing implants in the other room. She's kind of aloof most of the day. Okay, I'll stay home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're good well, at that too. Anna, why don't you, or Anna, why don't you talk about Tiger King? Well, let's let's get you talking about Tiger King right now oh because God. we finished the show the other day, and I want to hear your thoughts. Have you guys seen it? Yeah, we watched it. Yeah, we're like on episode. We're on episode three, three. right now. Oh, okay, yeah, well, man. let's hear your thoughts thus far because it gets weirder and weirder. Oh my god! We just yes. learned that every one of them is are, like we learned. They're all like into like, into like, like, like gay polygamy. Um, <laughs> like the dude, I'm just like, what? He's married to two dudes. Have you, and have then, you ever found out about the two dudes yet? Yeah, I found out about the two dudes, and then the other guy is like, got like they're not his wives; they're like his Con his concubines. They're like just there. What's wrong with that, guys? I don't really see a lot of problems with. I mean, he seems rather. Everybody seems rather happy in his. And his and then we're just finding out that we think she killed like her million dollar husband. Oh, she definitely <laughs> killed her husband. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so like we're getting into that. Like, I don't know, I'm just like mind blown. Yeah, yeah. she's getting a lot of ideas more than anything. She's just like, huh. <laughs> but were you not was your not mind not blown that you can buy a tiger for only two grand? Like, wait, that's only two yeah. grand. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a little bit blown that there's like so many out there now. Right! right. <laughs> so, so like if the world goes crazy, I all mean, these times been dealing with, let loose. We, we've been dealing with dogs and cats exclusively, and I'm like, I'm getting so sick of doggy style, personally. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I like okay. doggy style. This is I, real. I get back. That's what we want. As a live cat, there's seven people watching. It's That's okay. That's and then I'm like shocked at like how many people are like, Talking about it all over Facebook and because it's a train wreck and we're all stuck inside. Like, how can you not? Watch this is the first thing. I, yeah, it was a to it's, it's a like, thing. what is it? The number one. That's how she feels in our relationship. No, no, no. no. You're stuck inside of our train wreck. No, it's train wreck. <laughs> but only because you make it a train wreck. It wouldn't be a wreck. It's just because I let you drive. No, yeah, you drive it like that. Okay, all you cool kit <laughs> kittens and cats. <laughs> his, his music videos too. Oh, so. <laughs> It turns out that he doesn't sing any of the music. I knew it. I knew it. It sounded too. I was he like, he lip syncs it, right? Yeah, he lip syncs it. Oh, are those all. Oh, is that what they are? Yeah. Yeah, he like he does his videos and another guy sings them, which makes me oh. upset because I was like, actually, the songs are pretty good. I know. I've been listening to like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Like, yeah, it's, it's not that, that bad. It's not that, but all are, I know. I know. Like, oh, it's your favorite singer, and then they're like, dang it. It's kind of like Millie Vanilli. When you found out Millie Vanilli lips <laughs> And you're like, I really don't know if, if, what does it mean when I'm trying to sing a Millie Vanilla, Vanilla song or whatever? And I'm like, <laughs> and right now everyone's like, who's Millie Vanilli? At least, at least Bruno got to meet oh, Millie Vanilli. Millie, Millie Vanilli. You guys know who Millie Vanilli is, right? Oh, yeah. yes. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, we're just, Joan went right away. She's like, is Joe Exotic on iTunes? And she's like <laughs> searching. She's like, no, he's not. I was like, you can find it on I'm YouTube. so mad. Such I know, fun. so now, like, so how many episodes are there? Do you know? What, four more? There's total? There's, After um, there's seven. seven episodes. It gets weirder. Oh, it gets weirder. You think that it's How far weird. into it are you guys? They watch the whole thing. Oh, you finished. I feel like I'm, like, behind. You like, behind. Like, how I got left behind, because, like, everybody's already seen it all. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then at the same time, I feel like I'm going to walk away, and I'm going to be like, oh, my gosh, I just got dumber, and I can't get that time back. No, 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 you will be dumber, but it's still worth it. But then you realize, <laughs> you realize that your life isn't that messed up because you're like, wow, okay. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I feel pretty damn good about myself after that. I was like, we don't one, have tires, I'm though. not in Oklahoma. <laughs> I, don't mind, I don't mind being a little slower for you. <laughs> oh, thanks, oh, babe. Thanks, babe. <laughs> thanks, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in awe that he has like 200 and something tigers. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, why do we need Well, it's not just him, but didn't you see all the little dot pins around the United States yes, of all the ones that have? Yeah. 
And there's like, I bet you there's like five of them. They're like, why wasn't I in the freaking this freaking movie? Like, right? I know Joe. There's like probably all these other people that didn't get into the film. They're just like, oh, I've known people. him for 20 years. And who's to say that all those other little dots are breeding their little cats? Yeah. I can that means to buy the um, mullet for myself. Yeah. This is like I'm, the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. So then when we all yeah. break out in this apocalypse, there's going to be all these wild cats that we have to fight off on top of all these other wild people trying to get our food. Oh, no. They're slightly domesticated. So. so we got COVID-19 yeah. zombies and tigers everywhere. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> did you see her sword video? <laughs> I did, Deadpool over here. Yes, it was amazing. Yeah, she's good. She's been, pra she's been getting trained, too, <laughs> well, by my afraid. daughter. How did she not stab herself in the leg? Like, are those real swords? Oh, yeah. You're the guy those stupid hands are way super sharp. You didn't watch the video of her actually cutting her finger off? No. no. Okay. Literally, you watched the wrong video. You watched the one I posted a few days ago. Go to go to go to two, go to a week and a half ago, and you'll see the actual video. I am gonna have you go. Oh. You know, I do wanna say that I feel like we're kindred kindred souls because I was always used to be posting videos of her just being just ridiculous. Yeah. Michelle. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. But but then I stopped. But you know what? It's that fun. You know what? You find out that posting your wife nude is never good for the relationship. <laughs> I've got one I want to post. She was out back, and she was trying to take a selfie, and the wind's blowing. So you see her. She's on this yoga oh. mat, just like this. And she just keeps, like, pulling her phone up. I'm filming through the window. It's and she's awful. like, don't post that. I so, already uh, <laughs> I hate them so much, but it was part of like the, I don't know, they were doing like this challenge thing or whatever for like, you got to post something with your picture. I'm like, okay, yeah. so I was trying to get a good picture and the wind was blowing like this all over the place. So I'm trying to get a picture. No, 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 no. I, I really genuinely feel like that the wind was there the whole time and you were like, I love it. This wind is like, <laughs> just like. I was trying to be Pocahontas and I was not nailing it. I know. I don't think that wind was your problem. I think it was your wind was your best friend. <laughs> well, it didn't help either that my, my front camera wasn't working, so I had to, like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the worst. So you're, like, just taking. Yeah. Oh. I'll, send, I'll send it to you afterwards. I'm going to send it to you afterwards. You I want to see that. It is that's funny. Cool. It is oh, I, so too now I have two wives to make famous. Yes. <laughs> if you, um, if we're not quarantined, like, do you guys... Like, to, what do you guys like to do for fun? Do you guys like to travel? Do you guys like to just listen to 90s country? Like, what do you do? He listens to 90s country. I and, like to and, just, and, I just and like sync. to stay. Yeah, and he's in sync. He's a little stuck in old. Uh oh. Wait. I like to do everything. In sync and Backstreet Boys and oh, Britney yeah. Spears. Yeah. Two, 1999 and, was like really, really good. Yeah. It was a good, yeah. good yeah, time. Yeah, it's a good time. Good but uh, we like to go to the movies. We we don't have any friends, and so most of our time is spent at the movie theater because we like popcorn. You, but there's people there. I know. <laughs> we go on Thursday nights when there's not as many, and it's still yet an opening night for all the movies. And so we don't do Friday night dates. At he the just theater. goes in, pays for a ticket, and he goes and opens the exit for me. Wow. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. He doesn't. Uh, I actually, we did do this thing. We have since we have a five-member family, and we were at school back in the day. I taught my kids this, and they to this day think it's like genius. And I said, you buy three tickets, and you you put them all together instead of five tickets, and then you like give it to that person who's tearing the tickets, but you already have them all folded up, mm -hmm. and you like you helped them. They just, They'll never like undo them and count them all. No. So they just like rip them all off, and they just stuff it in the thing, and you just all five walk straight straight through. And my kids were just like. But we never had enough kids to do that, so we don't do that. See? <laughs> See? That's why you have to have that many children. Well, she's and the one who searched her purse where she's got Gotta that. have more kids. Gotta have more kids. <laughs> Doesn't work with three very well, but you can... No. You guys travel? Yeah, we have. We have. Here. We went to Canada last, like, last year and then Mexico, but we, we have now something that we bought, like, a month ago where we can go everywhere in the world. Can I do it? Huh? Would you buy a camper? No, no, we just bought like, we thing. bought like a timeshare thing. We, we paid for the entire oh, thing. Sweet. So it's um with, what company was that? I don't know. But anyway, then this happened and now we have to stay home. Joe Exotic Vacations. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> it's, with I, it's with IHG. So oh, okay. International, that's, uh, I think, is it Hilton too? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so we plan on going places now. So if you guys want to come, 
We yes. will come. We will come. <laughs> We've actually got to a point in our lives where it's like, from this point on, we plan on doing it different than like all the time before this. So right. To like change it up. Well, and so we're like, we have like an open relationship now. And <laughs> I have an open relationship now. Okay, bye. All right, it's like bye. Freaked. They're looking for people to so. Bye. <laughs> We're not really into trying new things at Bye. all. <laughs> Sorry, it's just a little mouthful. Just a I need to gag her again. Great. I mean, there's lots of things I need Bye. to be. <laughs> so, anyways, um, yeah, since like we got off tour with Disney, what is it now? Like ten years ago. I feel like like we traveled all the time. We were gone nine months straight, and. So now, now quarantined. Be, quarant being quarantined is like really driving us nuts because we're used to always doing something, always being out of town, and now it's like, this is fun. What do you guys do? What do we do? Yeah. Yeah, what do you do in the house and stuff? Like, what do you, what I know, do you right. do? We, uh, we decided we were going to go hiking, so we went, what, east of here, about an hour and 20 minutes to, what is it, Cooper? Lake Cooper? And we got there, and I checked online, and the park was open, and I pulled in, and they're like, oh, sorry, all the trails are flooded, so... I was like, okay, I guess we'll just go back home. And John's like, oh, should we go get, get some lunch? I'm like, to what? Take it to go and take it home? No, I just want to eat. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, no, honey, it was lunchtime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can at least have lunch. So for people that want to get a hold of you, how can they, how do you want them to reach out to you? Can I, your website? I have like, I have a burner phone. <laughs> <Just>. <laughs> Oh, what the burner phone is? You don't know what a burner phone is? Is it a flip? Really? Is it a flip phone? It's like a home phone. Oh my gosh, bye. <laughs> you can't bye. call it a home phone. It's a side piece phone. Side piece phone. What's that? She's my side piece. <laughs> uh, that's a home phone. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> burner phone. Did they get you on Skype or how did they? <laughs> <laughs> I like how they're going to write down this information. Like, <laughs> I, like I'm going to write. So what do they go to your website? Is that the best way? No, it's usually just through my, my messenger. Okay. So if they want to get a hold of my dental office, they can just, they can go to messenger and, or they, I do have a Facebook page for my web or for my dental office, the Smiling and Dental. It's all underneath my profile page um, on Kenny Wilstead. A lot of people, I'm, I'm maxed out on my friends list, but people can still push the follow button. Okay. Or and they, they can, can also, stuff. Okay. yeah. So. It, it's well worth it too, because like, you're going to see some stuff that it's like, I don't know how you do it. And then afterwards, it's like, I don't know how we did it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. There's usually like. Very talented. Very, like, there's like no words really. Yeah. And that's something too, that it's like, you can change something right away. It changes how they look like. It's not like, you know, you did gastric bypass and it's like, all right, well, we'll see you in, you know, six months and then we're going to be fat again. But, you know, so the teeth thing, that's such an immediate transformation. Yeah. And you can see people and you're like, wow, she's actually quite good looking, you know? And then yeah, I like to take, my, my biggest thing is I like to take people that something's wrong about that overall picture and, and their teeth is the only thing that's like off. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, if I'm at a restaurant or if I'm at the movies, if anybody sees something and I'm just like, that's not right. That's not a good like. I'm just like, I need to fix that. You and I'll ask them, what? You're like, there's nothing not right. I need to fix you. Like you say that to them? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Oh. <laughs> wow. I just say, I, I usually away. say, I'm like, do you want me to fix your teeth? And I get all excited. I don't even like, I'm not even shy about it. I'm like, can I fix your teeth? And I run away. She's, you she's gone. Them? You just like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> COVID, COVID, Corona. <laughs> I'm like, my finger goes through that whole thing. <laughs> and then you go backwards. Yeah. 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 I'm like, yep, that's a cavity. <laughs> <laughs> Another person, I'm just like, you have an abscess. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Just so, kidding. No, but, um, no, I do like I do like to just fix things that are just wrong, you know, in the world if I can. And 
So if I have that ability to, I did actually develop a, a smile makeover system that nobody else has. Um, and it just allows me to fix any, any smile that has crookedness to it, um, broken teeth, missing teeth, anything like that. And they'll walk out after two hours with a completely brand new like looking smile. And it's strong, it's not dentures, it's not a snap-in, it's not implants. It's, if somebody looks actually, looks up what a dental bridge is, they'll figure out how I can actually do it. But most people just don't think that they can get a straight teeth and a brand new looking smile without braces and all this other stuff. And you can actually bypass and circumvent braces completely. Because the thing is like, you can have crooked teeth that are ugly, and with braces, all it's going to do is straighten your ugly teeth. <laughs> so you, you now, congratulations, you have a straight smile with ugly teeth. But <laughs> had you not straightened them and you went straight to what I do, is crowning them with all porcelain crowns, I shave them in a way that makes it so that the, when the crowns that come on afterwards are completely realigned. And so they will have a straight smile after the crown work is done. So that's what you're talking about where you put, like, they're not caps, right? But you put the crowns over them that's what you mean caps and crowns are the same thing okay right. so i used to think of like oh one point that looks cool but then i see that you have to file them down to look like you know alligator teeth and that bothers yeah. me like does that hurt that is, no it doesn't hurt at all a lot of people it bothers most people if you have really nice teeth and they're just a little bit off here or there like most people are not going to come to me because they just it's just it's too aggressive of, it's too aggressive and i don't and i don't i'm not you're, it's gonna be hard to get me to like shave those down but if there's a whole bunch of if there's a whole bunch of the tips of your teeth are all ground down from grinding like not my grinding but their own or they have they're really dark and they're just ugly in general then i don't mind talking about doing my you know my fix but if they're like your guys's teeth and you're just like oh i just don't i just don't like this little part and this little part i just been like sorry you know there's not much you can do it's really not i mean i can shave it a little bit and miss i can trim them and make them more like comfortable to you but i'm not going to do my other i'm not going to shave them down and do all porcelain crowns because that's a really aggressive you know thing but it's great for people who hate their smile who hate the shape of them who hate the color of them who are missing them or there's just a thousand things they do not like to smile Right. Those are the best people that I can make them like I can go from zero to hero in two hours and there's gonna it'll they literally change as a whole why a whole person. Right. Like, it is a it is a an actual transformation of a being in just that amount of time. And so that's what my favorite thing to do and it's just I mean that's why I, I named my office Smile Again Dental for mm -hmm. people who would like to someday smile again. Right. Sad. That's sad. sad. I know. I actually want to get a t-shirt that's being like sad. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> you had posted a while ago that um, a lot of times people getting the wisdom teeth pulled is not necessary as long as they can do a, you can do a bite adjustment. Is that what you? Yeah, most people think that like, so there's a myth and I don't really believe in it that their, their, their wisdom teeth are just the driving force to crowding on their front teeth. Now, sometimes they are, but after age like 25 their wisdom teeth are in you know like they're they're not moving anymore right there's but there is a natural i don't want to call it a gravitational pull but teeth naturally do want to, to move forward so it's not because of wisdom teeth if you got rid of the wisdom teeth they could still actually do that um but a lot of these people are going um and getting a, all the surgery done spending thousands to get their wisdom teeth taken out just because they're in they're in tooth pain and I'm like, all you needed was about 30 seconds of your, let's say that it just drifted forward just a hair. If, you, if your teeth that are normally like, you know, going together like this, if they get off a little bit and they can't go all the way together, they're going to bang too hard though, while the other teeth are going all the way together. So right. it creates bruising under the teeth. And, it, and if that's actually, a t and what, when people get a small amount of bruising, that night while they're sleeping, they'll, they'll compress their jaw harder because their jaw actually is trying to understand why they're in pain. So it'll actually over compress and clench to where the next day, now they're in quadruple the amount of pain, all because they were off in the, in the beginning just by a little. So it's like somebody who has a little bruise right here. And so just like, oh, wow, I got a bruise. And so then they push on it really hard, except for if you're at night and you're, and you're under a tooth, they'll literally, your jaw will just clench on that bruised tooth just because it's trying to figure it out. And so when you wake up, now I went from a bruised tooth, just an all out facial pain like this. 
And some dentist can convince anybody of anything at that point. Oh, it's your wisdom teeth. Oh, your tooth is dying. We need to do a root canal. And all it took is just a quick little adjustment of the, of the enamel, and suddenly the teeth all calm down and everything's fine. And I don't even charge for that. Wow. That's amazing. Would have been nice to know. And I've done it. No. And I've done it. Yeah. I've done it literally like a thousand times. I probably do it about four times a week. And people are just like, they're literally prepared to spend gobs of money to fix this pain. And I could easily take that money and pretty much attach any massive, you know, surgical procedure to it to like excuse how I'm going to fix this pain. And I just, there's dentists out there that really don't, I don't know if they don't know that that's all they needed or what, but anything that they can do to kind of sign somebody up for emergency treatment, you know, that seems like they'll do, but it really is just a matter of just saying, zzz, 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 and they're just like, and the patients, I, it takes me 20 minutes, a long time. I don't know why I don't charge for this because I spent a lot more time convincing them that that's all it was. They're mm -hmm. trying to tell me, no, I think I need to get my teeth pulled. Yeah, I'm like, like, if, if you charge for it, they say, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? yeah, I know, right? I'm like, no, I promise you, like, I won't charge you, and you can leave today, and you'll be fine tomorrow. I'll, you know, text me tomorrow, message me, and confirm that to me, because I'm about 98% sure that's all you need. Um, and they're just like, okay. And sure enough, the very next day, somebody called it Black Magic one time after the next day, and she sent me a video of her driving in her car, and she's like, I don't know what kind of Black Magic you pulled on my mouth, but... I mean, I was in months and months of pain, and I, and, I, and I drove to you from Arkansas, and you fixed it in about five minutes, and I was sure that I drove, made that trip for nothing because you didn't pull my teeth. And she's like, but I don't know what kind of black magic you pulled because I haven't felt an ounce of pain since. That's awesome. So, what a compliment, though. That's great. Yeah. Incredible. So people can find you on your Facebook my page. Messenger. I also have a website that um, I just had to finish, so it's um, smileagaintexas.com. Okay. So instead of Smile Again Dental, it's Smile Again Texas. Then you spell out the word Texas. So smileagaintexas.com, and that'll have all my procedures on there. It'll have all the pictures and the before and afters and actual the videos that you guys have mentioned a few times as far as these patients and these before and afters and transformations, all of those videos I've put on there. So Cool. Um, and then you're, you're, they, can, they can follow you on Facebook because you have too many friends. Yeah, they can message me too and ask me if they really, really want to be friends. They can just message me on, 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 on Messenger and ask for help. <laughs> they'll message me and I'll actually delete somebody for them. Oh, oh look at that. Doug. I'm really nice. If somebody, if somebody personally like asks me to, that they want to, you know, me to be their friend, I'll find some unsuspecting poor soul and they'll get deleted. So you can delete Joan. It's okay. <laughs> She's fine. I don't think I'm following her. I tried to add her. I tried to tag her, but I didn't see her. I think she deleted me after I sent her a few messages about a week ago. <laughs> Was it from the waist down? He was playing Joe Exotic. <laughs> yeah, we play these we play these roles and sometimes I I take extra pictures and send them to extra people. It's all right. It's okay. Anna, you did great. Your first podcast. No. Yeah. Was it that bad? No, he did all the talking. <laughs> yeah, I he doesn't help me either, so yeah, I know. You guys are just here for eye candy. Yeah. <laughs> Moral support. <laughs> Background. All right, well, we'll, actually, we'll have to do this again. We'll have to have you guys on as a guest. <laughs> well, actually, once we're on quarantine, we'll, uh, we'll hang out for real. In real life. Okay, sounds well, good. Awesome. Cool. All right, guys, well, thank you for stopping by. Thank all right, you. See you all right, we'll see you later.